Good evening, my friends. I want to talk about, um, or give you rather, kind of my my protocol, so to speak, for spikes. And if anyone watching this doesn't do DNRS, um, this would apply to part times in life where there's a lot of stress on your plate and you feel very overwhelmed by life. So any time that's especially challenging compared to what is normal, that this would apply. Um, I'm going to be speaking more to people who are doing DNRS because that's been my journey. So that's what I can speak to. And I have some very practical, I have like five practical points on that, but I kind of want to set up an understanding of what a spike is first, the context, so that the practical steps make sense within the context of understanding what is a spike and how, how are we approaching it? What is it? What's the attitude we're taking toward it? So one of the first things to understand, um, and this is the case whether you're a DNRS or who's in a spike or whether you're just an ordinary person in a particularly challenging time of life for any reason, whenever our, we're in a particularly challenging situation, we're more neuroplastic. So that means our brains are easier to change when we are in a very difficult situation. And this can range from more life stress to, um, I've spoken to one of my brothers who runs um, like ultra marathons and does triathlons and he's clearly experienced what I've experienced with DNRS during like his 50 mile runs and that sort of thing. Like he, you kind of enter this zone because you have to overcome, you have to kind of disconnect and overcome your body in order to run 50 miles or a hundred miles. And so, you know, long, long distance exercise, but also just intense times of stress in your life are times where your brain is, is more plastic. It's more changeable. And one of the important things too, to understand about this is there is no standing still in a spike. There is either shooting forward really fast or shooting backwards really fast. There's, it's like in life in general, we can't hold still, but in spikes and challenging times, that's especially the case because our brains are much more plastic. So they're either being changed for the worse or the better in a pretty, they're being, they're much more imprintable. So that imprint's being made pretty strongly, either on the positive or the negative side, depending on how we respond to it. But we're more plastic, we're more neuroplastic. Um, and each of these, again, one of the biggest things to see, one of the biggest things that changed, I mean, changed the world for me and I began to experience this over time is that every spike is an opportunity for several things. One, it's an opportunity to wire in a way of being around challenging situations because, and, and to build in that, in, and along with that, to build trust in yourself. Because if you approach, if you come into a spike or a challenging time of life and you face it head on and you do everything in your, in your power with all the knowledge and all the tools you have to strengthen yourself, to make it an opportunity to become stronger, then, and you take that approach that every time life gives you a challenge every time you have a spike every time you have a challenging situation come up in you know your family life your work life etc you really take a step back you use all your tools and all of your knowledge to make this a time to make you stronger your brain's going to trust you and you're going to become a very very calm confident person who's not really shaken by much of anything on the flip side in general and this is something that happens in people you know if if when life gives a person an opportunity and they consistently get scared and back down then they become afraid of themselves they become afraid of life and it leads to becoming more limbic because a limbic way of being is essentially just a fear-based way of living your life you're just afraid of everything and most of all afraid of yourself and your own brain and afraid that you won't be able to handle what comes your way so you either every time a challenge presents itself whether it's a spike or just a challenging situation you can either become you know get kind of um, establish deeper trust with yourself or take away from that trust trust balance with yourself and loosen your brain's trust in you and decrease that trust and make life and the process of rewiring overall much more difficult. So we have a choice every time that happens. And the other thing too is to understand that, you know, spikes, it, it, again, this is like the ebb and flow of life is the ebb and flow of life. You know, we, it's, it's kind of exaggerated in the process of rewiring, but it's just part of life. Life has an ebb and flow to it. And each time there's a challenging situation, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to become stronger. Like life is handing you that because a lot of us, I mean, I don't know what I see it, how you will like, oh, yeah, sure. There's some people who are very proactive about seeking out challenges. Hi, that's me. Um, but ultimately in the grand scheme of things, regardless of whether you're the kind of person who seeks out a challenge or not, life's going to hand you challenges. It just is. That's life. So deciding to see it as an opportunity to grow is the most empowering empowered stance you can take and it's really rewarding because and, and i'll get to this um this is actually number five of the practical tips to during your spike remind yourself every day that you are taking quantum leaps forward like you are going to be so much farther along at the end of the spike than you were when you began if you put your head down and do the work and stay in it so that's a really comforting thing to remind yourself and i kind of learned that from experience and then i started applying it 
as I'd go through this process of ebb and flow and I was, and it always has held true. And I, now it's like, I don't even think about it anymore because I wired in this process that whenever I have a challenging day, because now it's more just like having a challenging day or a challenging three days. I don't really have more typical, like we were spikes because I'm too far in the process to have that happen anymore. Um, but when I have those challenging days, it's just automatic to like dig into the work and take things off my plate and become more focused. And I automatically pull out of, you know, other things I'm doing that aren't necessary and so on, which kind of ties into practical steps. So number one practical thing, when it comes to a spike, when you notice you're having a spike, take everything off your plate that you possibly can take off your plate and focus on the five pillars. So, and, and, and that's, that's just across the board. So make your rounds a first priority. And again, the tendency for people who are not very long in the process would be to not do rounds because you don't feel well, because it doesn't seem like they're working. And it's, there's so much resistance sometimes during rounds that it, it, you know, the, the kind of, I suppose, um, react, reactive response is to not do rounds, to not melody your mood, to be overwhelmed by the pops and kind of let it trap you. That's what it's trying, that's what the limbic system is trying to do is make you feel trapped. So the really important thing to do is understand that those boundaries are more important than ever. And it doesn't matter. This is again, understanding the pops and it's and how you feel after rounds or when you elevate your mood or you cut your pops, how you feel doesn't matter at all. This is your brain and your actions are taken note of by your brain, regardless of how it responds in the moment. It's keeping track of how you behave. So if you do your rounds, even if they feel flat and you're having resistance, um, and a quick tip with this is elevate your mood or distract or do something else novel before you begin a round and it'll make it easier to get into that round. If your brain's already kind of in a positive pathway, it's a little easier to go into a, a round and do something much more positive when you're already kind of in that positive pathway. So that's a quick tip for that. But it's really normal for your rounds to feel flat, for your mood elevation to feel flat, for things to just not feel like you're not really getting as much dose. It's just kind of feels like you're, um, it feels like you're fighting a losing battle is what it feels like. It feels like it's not working. Those are very typical things to feel when you're in a spike and it doesn't mean anything. All of those feel likes are just false messages from the limbic system themselves. That's it. I mean, and again, I've, I've lived through so many spikes I've worked through and we wired through so many, I mean, some of them like a month long. I mean, I had a relapse that lasted like a year. <laughs> like there's, I've been through the whole ringer in terms of very varying levels of spikes. And I guarantee you everything that's coming at you from your own brain when you're a spike is a complete illusion, it has no reality behind it whatsoever. So those feelings of it's not working or you're fighting losing battle and all the pops and the, you know, kind of fortune telling that happen, it's all false. It doesn't mean anything at all. It's just your brain flipping out for no reason. So that's the first thing. Take everything off your plate you can, focus on the five pillars, be consistent no matter what, be relentlessly, be more relentless than your limbic system. That's how you're gonna win this battle. It's not really a battle, but you know what I mean. That's how you're going to win ultimately in the end. Um, the second thing that's really important is to understand why the spike happened. Because there's three reasons the spike can happen. One is that you are not doing all the five pillars. It's pretty consistent. And I've had this experience in my rewiring where I would have, you know, a period. I feel like I'm doing fine. I don't need to be doing all the five pillars because I feel fine. That's a pop in and of itself because I was judging how I was doing based on how I felt. And that's always a pop because we never judge our progress by how we feel. It's a matter of looking for the more objective um, markers of recovery, which the biggest, one of the biggest markers is how easily can you respond to your pops and hits. That's like, how quickly can you redirect? That's a great sign of recovery. How you feel is not. So I would have times where I felt fine. So I would drop my rounds to 20 minutes a day because I was, I felt fine. I was like, I'm fine. I'm great. You know, it's time to get back to living life. Within two weeks, I would have a massive spike that would put me under and I'd be under for months just in this really intense phase of, of it was like, and it, it was part of the process for me because I had to realize that this is intense 24 seven, no matter what. And so if I let it off the, the gas for a little while, I would slide backwards and it would just be that much more intense going forward. But if you're not catching your pops, if you're not doing a full hour of rounds a day, if you are um, outside of your training zone, and, and this is important, like your training zone is a real thing. And sometimes people do step out of the training zones on purpose, like just kind of taking, like disregarding it as not necessary. The training zone is very important. Sometimes it's an accident. Um, that's actually number two. Exiting your training zone on accident is the second reason you might have a spike. Um, but if you're not elevating your mood enough, you know, any of the four pillars, any of the five pillars, if you're doing DNRS, you'll know what those are. Um, so any of the five pillars, if you're not doing any of them, you will be in a spike within a few weeks. Guaranteed. This process, like, because it's like, it's like metaphysical gravity. It works if you do it. It doesn't work if you don't do it. So it's just really important to stick to the five pillars every day and know, again, like it's like gravity, it's going to work. But if you're not doing all five pillars, it's guaranteed you're going to have something off. 
absolutely 100% guaranteed that if you were doing it for a while and you stop, you know, doing one of them, it you're going to be in a spike within, you know, a couple days to probably a few weeks. Um, that's pretty much guaranteed. So, and then sometimes spikes just happen for no reason at all. Like you're cruising along, you're doing all five pillars, everything's fine. <laughs> Spike. No reason. It's just part of life, part of the process. And in that case, so in, in kind of how you approach it is dependent on which of those it is. So in the first case, if it's, if you've ne neglecting the pillars, get back on the track of doing all five pillars every day and, and learn from that. Use it as a learning opportunity. Remind yourself, okay, so I stepped away. Clearly I wasn't like, clearly I'm not rewired yet. And I need to make sure that I'm being much more careful about um, making sure I'm loving myself and doing all five pillars consistently until I'm very, very, very well, re well rewired in the future. Well, you know, securely recovered. Um, so that's kind of something you can learn from that. Exiting your training zone, another learning opportunity because training zones are always found, only found by trial and error. That's the only way you find your training zone is trial and error. So if you step outside, you learn from it. Okay. That was too much. I had a period of time where I was training on peanuts and I, I ate five peanuts every day for like three days. And it was so not in my training zone. I tried again, like I stopped. I tried again in like a month and I was eating like spoonfuls of peanut butter with chunks of chocolate on it like a month and a half later. My body, my brain just wasn't ready yet at that point. So it's kind of like a trial and error process. If it's not working, scale it down, try something else, go back to it later, pretty easy. Um, and yeah, the no reason at all is usually just a sign that you're doing well. You're rewiring and the brain's resisting. That's usually, that's a good sign. Um, so, Again, so learn whatever you can learn from it, depending on why you had the spike. The other thing to understand too with this though, is kind of sense it was your brain in fight, flight, or flees, freeze. Kind of notice the pattern your brain is giving you. Is it just flat out terrified? Is it, are you like paralyzed? Or is it trying to fight with you? Because that kind of determines how you move forward. So with the fight and, no, with, with the fright, the fear, like the fleeing response and the freeze response, it's gonna be more like you're rising up and overcoming the spike. That's what's gonna feel like. You're gonna kind of have to dig deep and like rise above. That's what it feels like. When your brain is in fight, it's kind of like you dig deep and then you slide below, you play, you know, limbo with your limbic system. The image I've used is like, you have to get out of this room where the spike is happening, but the door is shut. So you have to become a piece of paper so you can slide out underneath the door. And so you kind of have to just back off completely don't fight with your pops, just kind of take it easy. So try to like find that flow space. Try to really just find, okay, where's the flow? Where does it feel like easy and flowy? Where does the energy feel easy? And just kind of get yourself lined up and go into the flow. Like find that little river, find a little creek and just get yourself in there. With the other, it's gonna be much more like rising above, you know, acting greater than you feel, you know, not giving into the fear, etc. Overcoming the freeze response, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's so that it kind of your approach depends on where your brain's at.